All right, welcome Miguel team to a video today. We're gonna to be doing something a little bit different today. We've been talking a lot about the bearish scenarios and our personal opinion isn't really relevant in uh, the market, of course. So, you know, you guys who know me, I, I talk about objective facts. I don't really shave opinions in there too much. And the objective facts are that we're, we're heading down and we are in a bear market and there's so much evidence, so much overwhelming evidence I can send you guys and show you guys and have already shown you guys to uh, confirm that we are in fact in a bear market. Um, but there is actually still one little bit of evidence, one glimmer of hope that we are close to the bottom of this drop and we are still in a bull market and we're going to turn around. So I'm going to show you guys what that is today. Um, now obviously this is just but one bit of data, but even saying that it's still to keep uh, still good to keep in mind both sides of the coin even though there's not a lot of data and not a lot to suggest we are still in a bear market a bull market and we are going to reverse um, it is always important to keep everything there on the table just in case it does happen you're able to react quickly and you're able to understand what is happening so you can make a, a quicker and faster more educated um, decision rather than just panicking and and making the wrong decision so what is that bit of data? Well, that is called, we're going to go to a, a two-day chart to start with. That is called the hash ribbons. Now, a lot of you guys have heard of the hash ribbons. I know many of you probably haven't. Uh, a lot of the members I have in my channel, um, and a lot of my followers who um, have would have heard of it, would have heard of it from a few years back. It hasn't, hasn't been used or haven't really been talked about that much in the last, uh, I'd say 12 months, it's been quite an uncommon indicator, but it's one of those indicators that kind of pop up and down as we're entering bear markets and as the price drops a lot, people like to refer back to the hash ribbons. And there's a good reason to that as because if we look historically, the hash ribbons, uh, they've held pretty accurate in terms of what they represent. And what they represent is they basically, oh, sorry, opening up the wrong thing. Uh, they basically represent to you that Every time you get this buy indicator on hash ribbon, so I'm just going to get my marker out quickly. Uh, here we go. I should be able to see my cursor. Every time we see this buy signal on the hash ribbons, this buy signal, um, we don't usually see, and I'm not. I'm just not going to say usually. We don't usually see. There has been a few instances where, where we have um, a close below that first daily close of the hash ribbon again. So, for example, the buy signal was here. All right, that daily close as 37,500. That was our daily close, right? So according to the hash ribbons, we shouldn't see a daily candle close lower than 37,500 again for Bitcoin. Um, now, historically speaking, the hash ribbons have held quite true. Um, Going back in history, we can see our last last flash was about 16,000. We did, in fact, not see a daily close below 16,000 again. Uh, obviously, we can we can we can trace this one back a few times. Daily close was around 8,800. We, in fact, didn't see a daily close below that again. Um, there are a few instances, and I'm going to ignore this whole section here. This whole COVID crash, I'm going to ignore it. It was an absolute anom anom ah, anomaly, if I can speak. Sorry. Um, a black sheep, if you have heard of, um, or it was unpredicted. And but I do want to say one thing about this: is it doesn't matter what causes a market to crash. If the market crashes below critical long-term supports, it's going to crash. So I think that's very important to keep in mind. It doesn't matter what it was that caused, what the trigger event that caused it. If the trigger results in the price going below major long-term supports, the price will in fact fall. So that's what we saw here. Everyone's saying, oh, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant to some degree, but it's also very relevant to another degree um, because we did in fact come down and touch a 200 week um, moving average on that seven week chart, which is our critical long-term support in the history of Bitcoin. If we're talking about uh, our, our long-term trend since the inception of Bitcoin has been that 200 moving average on the weekly. We've always touched that in bear markets. We've never gone lower. But going back to the hash ribbons, we can see it's kind of held historically true for the most part. Um, there has been instances, for example, here, where we did get a small close below. All right, and that's one instance. Uh, it wasn't significant. Uh, as you can see, if we take 
this hash ribbon here we did close below here again like i said that was full-blown bear market uh that was a COVID crash if we're scrolling even further back into 2014 and 15 it gets a little less accurate as you can see we did have this scenario here where we closed below um but for the most part uh the hash ribbons i think out of the nine pieces of data we have i think only two of them have have actually resulted in a close below and one of those pieces of data we're not going to go back to 2014 but one of those pieces of data uh was in fact that COVID crash so in the entirety of bitcoin realistically there's only been one instance where the hash ribbon has not held uh that that uh that theory that uh, the daily candle won't close below that pre previous daily candle when we flash that buy signal. So it's important to keep that in mind when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at this resistance and this support down over here, which is at thirty-seven thousand six hundred. Uh, we're going to go back to another chart in a second, but we're going to keep that one in mind because if we do lose that, it's going to be pretty significant for Bitcoin. But let's just go back to our other chart. So we can see uh, this is. A, uh, we talked about this chart a few days ago. We're going to go to one day just to remember. So you recognize this chart. You would recognize this chart. Awesome. We'll go back to one hour. Uh, we can see that we had just a sending channel here and we did break upwards. We are uh, pushed into this massive resistance range here. Now this resistance saying was about 42,000 to 43,000 resistance. Sorry, 42,500 to 43,000 resistance. Pretty huge, pretty significant resistance range. Um, and we'll go to the daily real quickly. And you can see this has acted as a support and resistance uh, many, many times over here, over here, over here, here, and here. So there's no there's no surprise that that is acting as a resistance gain. At the moment, we are trending downwards. We have retested this support, all right? This support of the channel. The question is, are we going to bounce? Are we going to bounce, or we're going to crash downwards and back through? I said in my channel on uh, Telegram. If you if you're not in the channel. Click the link in the description join the channel if we lose this trend line here and we do not bounce we are going to see another crash i believe this one will take us to forty thousand. right it will be the lowest peak we've seen so far if we lose this i believe we're going to go to forty thousand. the buy volume and historical buy volume is indicating that this is in fact a strong support zone um and our strong resistance zone and we do need to hold it here we had that breakout we can't break out reject and fail to retest we need to break out reject retest needs to be successful and we need to push upwards if we want any chance of reversing here we need to break above this red zone we need to get over a red zone we need to get over the forty-three thousand dollar resistance and that will send us up to test that forty-five thousand five hundred horizontal downward sloping channel so that horizontal downward sloping channel resistance that is a resistance we need to break to go upwards again we talked about that in a video the other day if you haven't uh, watched it i think it was Let's have a look. It was, uh, yep, it was this video over here. So Bitcoin, what to expect in the next two weeks. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. That will tell you everything you need to know about this chart. Uh, but the purpose of today's video, just to remind you guys, we are very much in a bear market. There's so much data that suggests we are in a bear market, but I just wanted to bring to your attention that hash ribbon and what that's telling us is telling us that we're not gonna see a daily candle close below 37,500. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens if we do come to our, down to that level. Are we going to close below it? Are we going to find support? Or have we found the bottom already? These are all questions that we can't answer right now. We need to see as the chart develops. We do know we are in a long-term descending channel, which is going to break to the upside eventually. The question is, will the upside break result in a strong enough push forward or upwards to reverse this entire downtrend? Because we are in a downtrend um, and I guess we just have to wait and see and let the time uh, do its course and then analyze as we go. Anyway, guys, if you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe um, and join our Telegram channel and our Twitter. Links are in the description. I will see you in the next video.